Hi everyone, I'm Char and welcome to Pop Projects. In this episode, we're making a picnic table. This picnic table is a perfect addition to any yard. You can find the project plans linked below. Let's get building. For the picnic table build, you'll need a cordless drill or driver kit, a wood router tool, a circular saw or compound miter saw, and an impact socket set. Our first step is to cut the picnic legs and we're going to cut those out of two by six lumber and you're going to need four pieces. I've already cut one of each piece. So I'm just making sure that I use all of this two by four and I'm putting it up against this and making sure that my measurements are accurate and equal. If you're using the method that I'm doing for measuring, make sure you account for the saw blade most saw blades are about an eighth of an inch thick. So if you do that, it's going to actually cut on your line. We're going to cross cut and bevel the seat supports. I'm making a cut here at 30 degrees. Here's a cool tip. If you ever need to make a cut that's greater than 45 degrees, you take a scrap piece of wood, place it on the bed of your saw, make a cut at 45 degrees on one side and then 45 degrees on the other side, and then go ahead and just slice that through the middle. Then you take your actual work piece and place it on the miter saw. Make sure you have some support there to help you out. And then you're going to add the number of degrees that you need. For example, for this project, the picnic table legs need to be at 65 degrees. So I'm going to add an additional 20 degrees to my cut in order to get my 65. Once you have your seat supports cut, go ahead and lay it across the picnic table legs. It should be 18 inches between the seat support and the ground. It should also overhang on either side 14 and 3 quarter inches. You can secure the seat supports to your picnic table legs with 3 inch deck screws. Make sure you drive your screws in so that they're flush with your workpiece. You don't want the end poking out on the other side. At the end of the project, we'll secure the table legs with carriage bolts just to give it additional strength and stability. Now we're moving on to the tabletop. Cross cut your side rails and pre-drill it. I've secured it with my bar clamps so that I can put in my pilot holes and my three inch deck screws. These eight inch pieces will serve as cross supports for the seat that we're making. You can join these parts together with three inch deck screws. Now all you have to do is duplicate what you just did. Go ahead and fasten the seat rails together and secure them with three inch deck screws. Now we're moving on to the top. Take your tabletop assembly, set it on top of the table and clamp it into place. At the end of the tabletop, drive three inch deck screws into the legs. Now it's time to get those carriage bolts out, install them to bolster the joints. We can bring it all together by driving deck screws from the outside of the seat support into the frame. We're going to reinforce the tabletop by installing two diagonal braces cut at a 45 degree angle on both ends. Slip the diagonal pieces between the seat frame and the top frame cross supports. For the diagonal braces, you'll need to use a screw that's a little bit shorter. So I have a screw that's an inch and three fourths Use a drill and a 13 32nd drill bit to bore holes in the legs and the tabletops to accept the carriage bolts. To prevent any wood splitting, make sure you drill from the outside to the inside of your legs. Tap your carriage bolts in with a hammer and then slide on a galvanized washer and nut just to protect your piece from the elements. And then you can go ahead and tighten it with either a socket wrench, a regular wrench, or you can even use pliers. After you tighten your washer and your nut, give it a good bang with the hammer. This just helps to smooth it out and ensure that it doesn't move. If you use a carriage bolt longer than three inches, just make sure that you cut the excess off with a hacksaw and give it a good filing just to ensure that no one gets injured from any protruding sharp pieces or the shank. We're almost there. Now it's time to cross cut the composite decking for the seats. The planks should have a five inch overhang and project one inch. Now we're going to bore one eighth inch pilot holes in the ends of each of your tabletop planks. 
fasten our planks by using two and a half inch trim head screws. And these are perfect for preventing any stripping and any wood splitting at the end of our boards. To maintain equal spacing between your planks, you can use composite decking plastic spacers, or today I'll be using 3 16ths of an inch plastic wedges. Most composite decking is composed of wood and plastic, and the ends have already been smoothed out for you. However, if you decide to use another type of lumber, such as pressure treated lumber or pine, you can round the edges over with a 3 8 inch round over bit in your router. I hope you enjoyed this project. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Pop Projects. For more awesome builds that you can do at home, be sure to check out Pop Projects at popularmechanics.com. Okay. Wait, see, can I have some air? Oh, sorry. Can I see the mirror, please? Do I have sawdust on my chin, or is that sweat? That's sweat. That's that sweat. Can you dab my chin, please? Little air. Okay. Action. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.